Okay, so I've got an Illustrator tutorial for you today, and uh, I'm going to show you how to use the pen tool and a combination of the width tool and using the stroke palette um, and a little bit of, of the Pathfinder window to help um, apply line work or almost like inking to a sketch or drawing you might have done. So uh, there's some techniques in here that, that might be able to help you out, and a lot of techniques I've been using lately and just kind of have stumbled across and learned. So I'm going to show you kind of how they work. So uh, for this example, we're going to open a new document in Illustrator. So I'm using CS6. And so I'm just going to open a new document. And I've got the Stroke Palette and the, uh, the Pathfinder tabs open. And we're going to be using that a little bit. So for this example, I thought we'd reuse the, uh, the B00 artwork sketch that, uh, that I did a few weeks back. Now that video did use the Blob Brush tool. It didn't use the Pen tool. Um, but for this tutorial we're going to get kind of a pen tool will give you a much cleaner edge to things so let's go ahead and use that so I'm going to go ahead and rotate this so we can see it uh, as it was meant to be alright now the first thing I like to do when I have a sketch piece of artwork on a layer in Illustrator is go to that layer and double click it and you get this this options uh, window where you can do a couple things to it so one thing I do like to do right off the bat is to dim images to 50% so if you do that, it'll just take every uh, image on there and just put the transparency down to 50%. So hit OK. And you'll see that kind of disappear a little bit. So I like to lock that layer. And then we're going to uh, put a layer right above it. Let me move my palette up so you can see what's going on here. So create a new layer above it. And this is where we're going to do uh, our line work. So let me zoom in a couple times and let's go ahead and choose our pen tool. So the pen tool uh, allows you to get some, some real clean lines. Uh, it's easy to use it um, to, to really kind of carve out shapes and such. And it's one of the, the staple tools in Illustrator to use. So for this tutorial though, we just want a, a outline or stroke. We don't want a fill to um, our shape. So come down here to the fill and go ahead and toggle that off. So we don't want any fill color, we just want the, the stroke color. So now I've got black selected as a stroke and we're going to play around with the pen tool here. So I'm going to zoom in on the axe a little bit and I'm just going to show you, um, that's a little too far, to show you how to use this and get some, uh, some pretty cool little uh, techniques out of it. So we're just going to take the pen tool and we're going to create a path. So I'm just going to start outlining this edge of the axe head and with the pen tool there's a couple little things to uh, to notice so right now I'm going to connect the uh, uh, the end of this outline to my sketch corner right here right and I'm going to drag it and I'm going to create a curve you can see the handles of that point moving and that's allowing the the, the line to, to bend in a, in a real smooth and fluid way so if I let go uh, I would now like to change direction and come uh, kind of downwards, right, with a with a new stroke. Well, if I just click here, it's going to create, it's going to go ahead and and finish that um, that curve. So what you want to do is when you want to go a new direction on a Windows machine, and I forget what it is on a Mac. I have a Mac here too, but I don't really use it very often. Uh, if you hold Alt and then click on that point what it does is it removes one of the handles so now when you when you click again it's almost like a straight shot and you can go a different direction so that's a, a huge um, uh, kind of technique right there in itself to get used to when using the pen tool is to if you if you hold alt and and click on a point it'll break that handle and you can start moving it a different direction so I'm gonna create one more little path and we're just gonna kind of we're gonna finish it up right here Okay, so say this is the edge of the axe that I'm working on, and one thing I would like to do is make um, parts of this line wider than others. So let's zoom in and we can look at the width tool and see what that's going to do. So I've got this axe head, and let's say we want to make this whole stroke wider. Well, in your strokes palette, <clears throat> and that's under window, and then you can toggle on stroke, or the shortcut here is control F10 you can change the weight and by changing the weight you're gonna boost up the overall width of that stroke or that outline and you're gonna you know be able to to toggle that now when you use this drop down you ha you see that uh, 
you actually have less than one point that you can use. So that's that's kind of a, a something to keep an eye on because um, the increments that they have here, you can go in between. So say you don't want two or three, you want 2.5. If you just input 2.5 into the dropdown, it'll give you 2.5. So you can go in and give it pretty precise numbers within that field there. Um, if, you, if you're really trying to stick to uh, uh, you know, uh, precision and, and you want certain weights um, uh, everywhere on your, on your screen. So let's say that, that this line, we want the ends to be sharp, right? So another thing under the stroke uh, window is down towards the very bottom, you have something called profile. And I've been using this a lot lately too. If you click profile, uh, you have some presets for ends for the stroke. So let's say we want just one end to taper off and go to a point. If you click that, it's gonna take the entire line and go from start to finish, the thickest uh, part of the stroke all the way down to uh, pretty much nothing at the end. So it'll give you a nice um, point on the end and that's that's something that comes in handy when you're trying to mimic shading or uh, trying to get more precise lines or, or shapes in there. Uh, there's a lot of other profiles, say you want uh, it to be kind of more rounded and loose on each end. Um, this still comes to a point but it leaves the overall uh, uh, shape kind of a little bit wider. So there's a lot of pro profile presets in here to use um, to get that line to just end any way you want it to. Uh, if you choose one of these and it's going the wrong direction, uh, there's a little flip along arrow to the right of that drop down. If you flip that, it will change the direction of where that sharp end is and where the, uh, the thick end is on the stroke. So say you're doing something like this and you want that sharp end on, on the, the tail end of the stroke and then uh, you want the uh, you know the the wide end at the beginning, but you don't want the whole thing to just start tapering off. That's when you can start using the width tool. So over on the left hand side, the width tool is kind of this odd looking uh, uh, icon. To me, it looks like a flower at first glance, but if you click on it or the uh, uh, it's shift and I guess W is is the shortcut. Uh, this width tool comes in super handy. So if you use this just get it selected you'll see my cursor has this little squiggly <laughs> line underneath it now this is really cool so now you can grab any section um, in the uh, in the in your original uh, line shape and you'll see it's starting to uh, it, it's starting to track where the cursor is with this little tiny um, dot well if you grab anywhere in that shape you can just grab it and start pulling on the width tool and you can see that you can actually go through and start making um, certain sections of your outline super thin or super thick and Illustrator does a really good job at trying to um, transition the uh, the width from point to point so it's going to be pretty fluid since we grabbed it kind of here though it's going to the to the end to our anchor point um, but you can grab anywhere you know within your line and really start uh, uh, applying different widths to uh, your piece. So let's say, let's go back and say we want um, a different profile for this. And let's say we want something like this. All right. Now we have this, if you look at the sketch, we have this, this secondary kind of edge coming through our, our line shape. And we want to ink that too. So I'm going to use the pen tool again. And let's say I want to drag a new curve. All right. And I want to connect these up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bump the width up to two points on here. And I'd like the end as well to be sharp. So I'm gonna go back to the profile and I'm going to change the end to something like this. It's going the wrong way, so I'm gonna flip it and say I like something like that, right? Say so let's, let's bump the width up one more. When you get done with, with line work and you want to start combining elements and getting uh, different lines and, and first transformed into shapes and then transformed into uh, one like piece elements. Right now we have two separate lines and it's kind of easy to, uh, to start losing things, right? So to start, when, when, when you've gotten kind of done with your line work, one of the things I like to do is I like to select um, my lines and then you can turn them to outlines. So if you go to Object, uh, Path, there's an option here to Outline Stroke. So once you outline that, you'll see what it just did. It just 
put in points everywhere along those outlines and created a shape. Now, once you do this, you cannot change the stroke anymore. You can't change the width, you can't change the ends, um, you, can't, you can't play around with any of the other presets. Uh, but when you're, when, when you're done with artwork and you want to keep it one uh, bigger shape, this is a, a good way to do it that way. Another reason to have it like this is when you scale up or down, say, in a different program, uh, some programs will scale the stroke as well and some won't. So if, you're, if you've got your, your outlines done and they all have a two-point stroke around them and you go into another program and you, you want to shrink it down, uh, it might leave that two-point stroke, but, but while you're shrinking an object down, and it makes it look like one big blob of, of artwork. So um, this is one way that I like to use to kind of finalize it when I'm done with line work and to have just a, a, a shape that's done. So let's go to the Pathfinder tool. The Pathfinder tool is what we're going to use to join these two together. So using the Pathfinder tool, I like to use um, this one. We're just going to be using Merge or Unite. Uh, so you want to click your shapes, hold shift, and select both the shapes. So you can just uh, you know, use your cursor and select them both. And then the Unite um, Pathfinder tool is this first icon on the window and it's the left hand side and you just click that and what that did is it just united both lines into a single element right so the pathfinder tool is actually I find it some of it very very tricky at times <laughs> but it's gonna be one of those windows that you're gonna use a lot when creating shapes especially when you get into things like typefaces and, and, and objects that you need to um, you need to combine them or even divide elements uh, let me show you a couple of other things in, in the Pathfinder tool. So let me just control Z out of here and get my uh, my lines back. So say we want, for some reason or another, we want the, you know, the, the intersect to be gone. So I'm going to go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke again. And there's a lot of different things you can do here. If you kind of play around with these presets, um, they, they, they really, uh, pretty much anything you can think of where you want to, like, dissect or bisect a, 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 a group of shapes you can do here. So that was minus front. Um, you can see that got rid of that section. Uh, another one I use a lot is called trim or uh, yeah trim. So say I want uh, I, don't know, I want an area to be um, trimmed out a little bit. Um, you can do something like this and then go through and remove that shape, delete it. Um, divide comes in very handy so say I want this I want all these pieces to just be in parts and I want to uh, take parts out or whatnot the the pathfinder at the bottom uh, left is divide so if I divide that it doesn't first glance it doesn't look like it did anything but now I can select different pieces and remove them if I want um, some of these get like I said get very tricky the ones you're going to use the most um, when when doing line work for the most part is going to be unite and trim I find so these are just a, a couple of the uh, couple of things you can use to uh, to do line work. Let me show you one other thing. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna come down here to a different end of the axe and let's quickly draw another couple couple lines to shape it. Like so. And now I need to flip the color because the last thing I was working on was a shape. So Illustrator will auto um, kind of uh, it'll use the last attributes of that shape so it went ahead and uh, I started out in a fill rather than another outline so uh, you might want to uh, keep that in the back of your mind uh, so let's go ahead and let me just show you a couple other things in here that are kind of cool uh, you can do different things to the line you can give it different ends so you can give it a rounded end or a cap I guess um, this you'll notice this first uh, butt cap stops right at the point um, the rounded cap, of course, is a rounded cap, and then the uh, this projecting cap is kind of cool because it will still give you a blocked end, but it will go right past the point. So um, it, it it will go past the point, however, uh, however the width is set. So if you have three point, it's gonna if you if you imagine around that end point, it's gonna make a, a perfect three point square. It's basically what it's doing. You can give it different corners. Um, in here, I don't think it's gonna. I need to draw a different line and change my direction. So this would be a rounded corner. See down here, bottom right. 
Uh, you can change the way the corner is to get it sharper to join it, or this is a bevel join, so you can knock that end off. Um, one kind of cool thing that I've been playing around with is this dashed line. So if you toggle this on, you can get a, a outline um, that has dashes, and you can actually, you know, select the 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 length of the line and the gap in between, and get some interesting stuff going on here. Uh, this comes in handy. This used to come in handy back in the day when I was doing print work, and I had to do the outlines of coupons for people to cut out. <laughs> uh, man, it brings back a lot of strange memories, but. Um, it, it, it's handy for things like that, but I've been finding that it's also handy for shading. So, um, you know, say we wanted to we wanted to go back to our, um, and I'm going to let you know a little secret that I'm playing around with. So, say we come back down here to the axe handle, and we want to kind of give this a different uh, kind of uh, another uh, line, but it's broken up and has a little more uh, just kind of action to it. If you apply a profile preset to um, uh, let's flip this over to say a, a gap, you know, a dashed line. You can get some kind of cool little uh, effects out of it. So, you know, you can do something like this, and it, it makes it nice and broken up. Uh, if you do other things, I think if we change this to rounded, yeah, rounded, you can almost get dots, like a dotted line in between, which is kind of cool. So it almost looks like droplets, um, but you you still have the ability to taper it or or play with the width tool and come in here. And uh, let's just do that and, and really start getting some different um, ways to do lines and different textures and stuff just by playing with the stroke palette in the window. So I hope this uh, helped you out a little bit. This is something that um, I've been using a lot lately. Uh, if you use Illustrator a lot, the best, I mean, the best part about Illustrator is that, you know, once you're done with this thing, you can scale it up or down as as large of a graphic as you want it or uh, get down pretty small um, and it, it retains its shape because it's, it's vector information so it's it's all based on points and uh, and uh, spatial data rather than uh, raster based images like Photoshop which is based on pixel point um, or, or pixel data so uh, as you know pixel data once you um, scale it up it falls apart because you're basically adding more pixels in between others and Photoshop is doing its best to guess what pixels should go where. As an illustrator though, it's just, it's all math based and it's saying, okay, point A to point B, as it gets bigger, well, I just need to increase everything else or decrease everything else. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a program that uh, works very well for illustration and getting some real clean line work. All right, hope that helped you out. And uh, yeah, I will see you back later. Please leave a, a comments below, especially uh, if this helped, um, what else you would like to see as far as tutorials? And the webcam is a, a new thing that I've tried to include on this one, so let me know if that was more of a distraction or if that uh, helped out in any way. And yeah, all right. Later on, guys.